Hello everyone and thanks again for tuning in to another Genesis Moment. This week we don't really have all the nice sun anymore, do we? We have a little bit of rain and everything else going on. So it just goes to show that sometimes it's not all sunny days. And that's our lesson this week in Genesis. What happens when persecution comes? You know, it was just a matter of time until somebody came by who did not like what Peter and John were talking about with regards to Jesus. Those people came at the most unlikely place, the temple. After all, Jesus is God, you'd think that people at the temple would like you talking about God. Well, actually no. The idea that Jesus as being the Messiah was still in the Jewish mind a pretty blasphemous thing. After all, it was only a little while ago since they crucified Jesus. Now, his followers are being brought up on trial. So what do they do? They're brought into a certain place where they're asked to stop talking about Jesus or else. Now what kind of guys were these? They ruled over the religious people, they ruled in the temple, they ruled in their communities. Now you tell me, you got threats from these guys that they would might kill your family, ruin your job, and ruin your life if you keep preaching Jesus? What would you do? So a normal person would probably take these threats as pretty real and maybe I should consider my ways and maybe stop talking about Jesus so much and you know, maybe save my life and maybe save the lives of my family. But you know what? When something is so precious such as salvation and such as Jesus and so real such as Jesus, you can't help but preach. And that's what these boys told all these elders. So those boys made the position very clear to this ruling elite. This is, we're going to fear God more than you because we cannot help but testify the things that we've heard and the things that we've seen about Jesus. Now, that's a pretty bold statement. So bold that it kind of caught the attention of this ruling elite and impressed them maybe just a bit because they realized that these guys are not lettered or skillfully trained individuals in the religious art of Judaism. They were unlettered, unlearned individuals, but they had been with Jesus. Now, whenever I'm having a hard time, whenever I go through a difficult situation where I have to speak up and I have to testify about Jesus or I have to stand my ground on the truth, it actually just really gets me going and I just love it. I love it so much that right after those, right after those really hard meetings, I want to go and tell my friends, you know what? The apostles did the very same thing. Right after that really difficult meeting in front of all the elders and chief priests, they went basically running to their companions and they told them everything that had happened. And you'd think that their companions would be freaked out and scared too. But we actually don't get that sense at all. Because you know what? They prayed. And what their prayer was, was A, they acknowledged that God was the ultimate authority and so we ultimately need to obey Him. Second, they came to the realization through the Word of God in Psalm 2 that people hate Jesus. So this is just part of the gig. And three, they realized they needed more power and more boldness. And that's what they prayed. And that's exactly what they got. You know what? God was pleased. How do I know? The ground began to shake. That's God's way of saying, out of boys. You know where the power is at. Keep at it. So what if I'm scared to talk about Jesus? What do I do? What's the advice you'd have for me? Well, you know what? Later on, the apostles would say some really interesting stuff about persecution, mainly this, that they were glad they were counted worthy to suffer the persecution. Also, be encouraged. Be encouraged because the people in your faith who have gone before you, the people who have changed the world, who God has used to bring light into this world, have always suffered persecution. Remember, this world is dark, your light. Therefore, don't put that light under a basket, but you be set on that mountaintop so all the world can see. Well. What about if they threaten me with my family and they threaten me with my whole life? Well, I then I guess you gotta evaluate what is your life? Our life is a vapor, but it was given to us as a gift from God. And he gives and he takes away. Blessed be his name. Who's your God? Is Jesus your God? Then serve him. What if I struggle with boldness in my life? What if I'm not that bold? Well then, pray. Pray for boldness. You know, it wasn't past the apostles to pray for boldness, and it's definitely not beneath you. In fact, it's something that the apostle Paul would later on ask the church pray for. Boldness and open doors. This has been a great lesson on boldness, the importance to be faithful with the gospel no matter what the cost. 
That's a big, important lesson that we've learned here in Acts chapter 4. I'm Mark. I want to thank you again for tuning into Genesis. And please like and share the page.